What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and oh boy, I'm so freaking excited for this one. This has to be one of the best, if not the singular best idea that has ever come from this channel, because today I will be ranking all the things that I like in a woman. I will literally be building my dream woman. Wouldn't your wife be considered your dream woman? Oh God, no, let's be serious here, Barack. Yeah, she's gotten way too old for Joe. He prefers his ideal woman's age to end with teen. As long as there's a nine or an eight in front of that teen, but uh, the Joe dog can let some things slide. Wait, what the hell do you mean by that? Uh, nothing at all. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and get this list started because this one is a doozy. Anyways, up first, we got being adventurous and I'd like to say that's a fantastic plus. I don't need it. But hey, if she's not afraid to get down and dirty and participate in some extracurricular activities that may or may not involve something that rhymes with egging, then I am all for it. After that, we got someone who is athletic, and I do like me my strong dommy mommy, so I'm afraid that's also a fantastic plus for me. If she's fit, then you know she's going to hit you in all the good ways. Joe, I was with you on the dommy mommy aspect for a bit, but then you blatantly said that you like it when they hit you, and that's honestly where you lost me. You don't understand. If I got hit, it's because I probably deserved it, and I was a stupid idiot for ever saying something mommy wouldn't like. This is cutting a bit too deep into your fetishes, and I don't like that at all. Well, get used to it, Barack, because this whole video will have a whole lot of that, and I'd argue that the Joe heads like their Joe dog lore. Anyways, oh my God, after that, we got two certified bangers because my girl must have a butt and some knockers on her. It can be either or, but if she has both, then oh boy, you're almost on your way to being Joe's dream girl. But I feel like we all knew that the Joe dog was going to put that high up. Let's move on to clothing, and it's a good quality if you know how to dress. But me personally, the less they have on, the better it is for me. Now that's a banger of a line right there, Joe. You are spitting pure facts right there. As always, the Bidenator continues to please everyone with this list. You're not really pleasing me with this list. You know this is a super demeaning list and shows a whole bunch of physical traits that women cannot control and that has to be tough for their mental image. Hey, I know that we're building a dream woman, but who's to say this doesn't apply to my dream man too? Well, that still means you're also just making them feel insecure about their body. Okay, pussy, give me one example where personality can beat a huge badonkadonk. He has a point there, Barry. No, he does not. Sorry, but it's two against one, Barack. I regret to inform you that your words fall on deaf ears, my man. Then we got clothing, and that's a good trait. I like my girl being able to dress me. I don't think that's what the clothing category means, Joe. Yeah, sure it doesn't. Anyways, after that, we got confidence, and this goes into A, I'll take it. And the reason for this is that if they have too much self-respect, then they'll talk back to the Joe dog. And this is only okay if they are indeed dommy mommies. If they're not, then it'll be like when my wife complains, oh, Joe, sweetie, please don't stare at other women when we're in public. Like, sure, I'll do that if you can magically de-age yourself. After that, we got two traits that literally do not matter at all. Like, I don't care if you have dance moves because mine are obviously better. And as for emotional maturity, I don't need that because we all know that I may be an old man, but inside I am a young, dashing man trapped in this body. I identify as a teenager. Jesus Christ, that is so creepy hearing from your old and feeble self. Nah, man, I smell him on that. I too identify as a young man, but I am already dashing, so we don't need to worry about that part. Well, uh, you know what, if you think that I won't say anything. Anyways, after that, we got abs, and a lot of people don't like abs, and thankfully, the Joe Dog is not one of those people. You guys ever see the abs on Lean Beef Patty? Now, those are definitely some big dommy mommy vibes, and it is a must-have for the Joe Dog. Then, oh, brother, we got empathetic, and who the heck cares about that? You can spit on me and stomp on me and just overall treat me worse than a goddamn insect, but if you're hot, then I will let all of that slide. Joe, do you not have a single ounce of self-respect? Empathy is one of the most basic human traits. Like, that is insane that you don't care about it at all. Is it really that crazy? Barack, take a moment and let it all marinate in your mind and ask yourself if it's really necessary for the Joester. Okay, point taken. Exactly. Remember, this is the Joe Dog's list and not yours. After that, we got two fantastic pluses, and that is eyes and some good old-fashioned feet. Uh, uh, ah, uh, I can already imagine the wonderful smell of the feet and having some nice piercing eyes that look directly into my soul is absolutely amazing. It takes me back to when I was in high school and this girl tripped me with her beautifully slender feet and amazing legs and then said, hey loser, get up off the floor. You look like a fucking idiot. And then she poured all her chocolate milk on me and stared at me with these eyes that were full of disgust and I couldn't help but fall in love with her in that moment. 
I think that started my love for chocolate milk, quite honestly. Joe, that sounds like she bullied you. Nah, man, she totally wanted me. Sure, we never became a couple, and every time I asked her out, she said, ew, look at yourself, you look pathetic. But man, that only made me want her more. Too bad they got her. What do you mean they got her? Yeah, what a great memory. Too bad I never saw her after they got her. Anyways, after that, we got flirty and funny, and uh, I'll take it, but it's not really that important either. If someone is funnier than me, then I can't have it. As for the flirty slash playfulness, I mean, I don't know if I really need that. Too much affection is a turn off. Make me work for it. Make the Joe dog absolutely beg for any sort of affection. Don't just go giving it to me. Then, oh boy, my absolute fucking favorite, and that is hair. <sighs> Jesus Christ, Joe, that sniff could have been heard from miles away. Sorry, I got so excited at the thought of hair. Now, this, of course, is a must-have, and you got to make sure that the hair is well-conditioned and smells amazing. After that, we, of course, have height, and this really depends on my mood. Sometimes I want them tall, and sometimes I want them petite. It is still a must-have, but as for honesty and independence, that'll go into the, eh, I'll take it. Because who the heck needs an honest or independent person? Not the Joe dog, that's for sure. Up next, we got a must-have, and those are legs. Ooh, the Joester loves him some legs. They barely edge out feet, in my opinion, and lips and body muscle. I think lips are a good plus, but body muscle stays at a good quality. I'm not opposed to it, but I don't want to date The Rock. I mean, unless... I don't think you want to date The Rock, Joe. You're right, he would never go for me. I got too ahead of myself. But anyways, after that, we got occupation, and that goes into the A, I'll take it category, because why would I care what they do? Openness is a good quality, though, because if they're open to using the swing in my house, then boy, howdy, that'll be great. Overall, grooming is a must-have, though, because I cannot be having a smelly person in my vicinity. Joe, you realize how hypocritical that is, right? You're the same guy who barely brushes, and quite frankly, I don't even know how many times you shower. I conserve water is what I do. More people should take my approach and shower and bathe less. How about I hit you guys with a joke? Where do they make smells? Ahem, they make them in the old factory. Nah, that shit was a stinker. Whoa, way to keep up with the smell puns, Donald. Wow, uh, I didn't even notice that. His joke genuinely stunk up the room. All right, that's enough of that. I do not smell, and I just have a natural man musk, and the ladies dig that. Onion and cheese is not a natural man musk. I beg to differ on that, Donald. Anyways, as for our list, we now have someone who is physically affectionate, and this is a fantastic plus, in my opinion. The Joester likes himself some of that, but the problem is that I get too tired too easily. Shocker. I know, right? But after that, we got someone who is romantic, and that's a good quality, but everybody stay alert because we got an absolute banger up next, and that is scent. If you have a great scent, then I'm going to automatically fall for you. You can look like Lizzo with a buzz cut and have no redeeming qualities about you. I will date Gorlock Eater of Worlds if they have a good scent. The hell is a Gorlock Eater of Worlds? If you know, you know. We've all seen a Gorlock in our lifetime and just know that the Joe Dog will get down and dirty. Then to go with that, we got another must have and that is sexual skills. Without getting too descriptive, the Joe Dog needs some of that Gluck Gluck 9000. Spitting straight fire right now instead of saliva. This is a W for Joe. W's are all I can carry. Then after that, we got a bit of a boring one because then we got smart. And who the heck cares about that, really? I mean, I'll still take it because if they're smart, then they can help me beat this one level in Super Mario Wonder that I'm stuck on. What level are you stuck on? Well, uh, this is a bit embarrassing, but it's the start of the game, but that's not really the question here. After that, we got a smile, and that is a good quality, but not as good as a nice-looking tongue, which will go into a fantastic plus. What the hell does a nice-looking tongue look like? I don't know, but that shit gotta be long and resemble a snake tongue, like hiss at me, please. Then after that, we have another must-have, and that, of course, is the voice. I need it to either sound super dainty and like an angel descending from the heavens, blessing me with a beautiful voice, or it has to sound borderline manly and sound like you're gonna rob me for all of my valuables. What if she just has a normal voice? Well, that's okay, too. Honestly, I will take anything I can get. Ending off our list, we got wealth and weight, and those don't matter at all. If you make a ton of money, that's cool, but I don't really care. I just want someone to love me. And if you weigh as much as Gorlock Eater of Worlds, I have such a low self-esteem that I will quite honestly take it. To be honest, this whole list was useless. The main thing I want in a girl is for her to have a pulse. I just crave affection so much. That is some of the saddest shit I have ever heard, Joe. You're right, I take that back because I have more respect for myself. 
She cannot be fat and honestly, if she's hot enough, then she really doesn't need a pulse or be conscious to be honest. Wait, what? What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list. And this time around, Barack and Donald employed the services of the almighty Joe because we got ourselves a sleeping tier list. And we all know that no one sleeps better than I do. Give me a fat meal and I will challenge you for that title. But then again, they don't call you Sleepy Joe for nothing. Exactly. I know how to sleep and I know how to do it among some of the best. I don't know if that's a skill you want to be necessarily proud of, Joe. Nah, you just wouldn't get how amazing it is. Like imagine you're bored at the movies and at a moment's notice, you can just knock out. Then why even bother paying for the movie at that point? Like whenever I hear you snoring in the theater, I want to literally summon the wrath of Zeus to smite you. Well, I don't do it all the time, but you cannot ask me to stay awake during Oppenheimer. I couldn't care less about some nerd who made a bomb. Barry bombed stuff all the time, and we don't make some sort of hoopla over it. You guys quite literally almost call me out on it and make a big hoopla over me doing stuff that was done like almost damn near 10 years ago. You know what, I agree. We should be forgiven for stuff that was committed a while ago. Well, you're just saying that because you want everyone to forget the fact that you were on Epstein's Island. Yeah, and we're still super upset we got no invites. I know I would have had a field day over there. It would have been like an all-you-can-eat buffet for the old Joe dog over here. That is most certainly not what I'm implying. Well, I speak for myself then because, boy, howdy, that's all I can say about it without getting into further legal trouble. But anyways, let's get on to more important matters because this tier list has me itching, itching to sleep, that is. And let's look over our first entry because we got this Dutch oven looking entry. Now this would feel like a great sleeping position if your house was freezing and if you had no heating. However, I will say that this has some drawbacks because if you decide to fart, then it'll be wraps and you'll be poisoning yourself. And I don't know about you guys, but I know that my farts and it's basically chemical warfare and it will immediately knock someone out if they inhale it. Like they were worried about mustard gas in World War I, but they should have used some of my gas instead. So all those things considered, I still think it merits a solid C tier, but I cannot see myself comfortably falling asleep knowing I can wake up from friendly fire because of a stink bomb that I set off. Joe, your farts cannot possibly smell that bad. Barry, are you really asking yourself that? This is the same man who chugs Nesquik and loves blue Gatorade infused hot dogs. Do you really think this dude does not have smelly farts? You know what? Point taken. Yeah, thanks for having my back, Donald. Not really having your back, but more so just pointing out how horribly any body odor you emit smells. Sure you didn't have my back. You literally complimented my aura because the more I stench, then the more my battle power increases. You're so silly when you try to hide the fact that you love me. Joe, I genuinely hate you. I have a literal hatred for you. There he goes again, being all silly. Anyways, after that, we got a one-legger position and I have to be upfront about this one because this is a D tier. Like what can possibly be comfortable about having one leg completely off the bed? I'm sure as hell that it probably got all tingly because it's lacking some blood flow and honestly, you're probably holding up most of your weight. Like look at the photo and observe that he also has one goddamn hand off the bed too. Almost half of his body is off the bed and I know that he is not relaxed. This is a crime against humanity. You know what, Joe? I actually fully agree with you on this. Like you're one bad movement away from falling off the bed. And I know damn well that Donald's ass will be bursting through his shorts in that position. So he risks ripping open his undies and pants. Why the hell did I catch a damn stray in this? But I will admit that the Don does indeed have quite a scrumptious behind. When they talk about apple bottom jeans, they really are talking about me and just know that the ladies love a round and firm buttocks. Don't count out the men too, because I also admire your rectum. I think I'm gonna lose my butt now and it's thanks to Joe's comment that I'll deprive America of my ass. I doubt you'd be able to get rid of it even if you tried, but enough talk about behinds because we will fall behind the list. I crack myself up. But anyways, after that, we got the sprawled out diagonal position. I really like this one. But this position fails heavily during the winter time because of the lack of a blanket. However, if you're sweating balls and you're trying to sleep, then this position should be your go-to, unless you sleep on something smaller than a queen-sized bed. I am thinking an A tier for this one. Now, Joe is the pillow that is absolutely doing nothing necessary for this sleeping position. Yes, because sometimes it can be your snuggly wuggly buddy and can help if I saw a spooky movie before sleeping. This is a grown ass man, everyone. A grown ass man who just said snuggly wuggly. And now you said it too, so that makes it two grown ass men saying it. You two are using the term men very loosely. 
Are you calling me a baddie, Barack? Because I will not refute those claims. Anyways, after that, we got the too cool for school sleeping position. We naming these now? I decided to just now. But anyways, this is a B tier because it is comfortable for a little bit. But like, what the fuck are you doing acting all smug and shit with your leg over the other? Like you will eventually get uncomfortable. And for what? Just to look cool? Why the hell are you hating so much, but you then place it in B tier? Because it's still better than the other two beneath it. Anyways, after that, we got an instant S tier because this is the go-to sleeping position and it checks all the right boxes. I call this one the old reliable. You can never go wrong with this one. And you're actually supposed to sleep in this position because it helps with your back. But I imagine it's gotta be hard for people with massive tits like Donald over here. Joe, you're acting cocky as hell right now for someone who literally got asked to do a goddamn sleeping position tier list. Because the Joe heads wanted it and they know that the Joe dog is an elite sleeper. Just like how we all know that you're an elite eater. You know, they made a Goosebumps book about you, Donald. Uh, it's called The Blob That Ate Everyone. I will actually kill your sleepy ass, Joe. Now, now let's settle down because that was actually a good burn from Joe. Good burn my ass, he just called me fat. Donald's right, it can't be a burn if it's quite literally the truth. But anyways, after that, we got the same old reliable but summer edition because if it's hot out, you'll want no blankie and it still checks all the right boxes for a good sleeping position. So it's yet another S tier. And as a matter of fact, so is the next one, which I call the spread eagle because you're spread starfish, but it still feels nice. Now the spread eagle I can get behind, actually more like I'd wanna be in front of someone doing the spread eagle. Donald, wait till after the video to get in front of me, you silly goose. Anyways, following that, we got the mommy help me. And this is the cradle position and it is a good position, but after a while, you're kind of tired of it. However, if you're having a panic attack from taking too many shrooms, then this fetal position will be your goddamn lifeline. And I think it merits an A tier. Joe, are you talking from personal experience? Nah, man, it happened to a friend of mine named, uh, well, uh, his name was uh, Bo Jiden. He was frozen in time for like three hours in that position before finally coming to. That's a story for another day though, and I'd rather not remember that horrible experience. I thought you said this was your friend that did it? Uh, yeah, I don't wanna relive his trauma. I'm very empathetic, you see. Uh, let's just carry on with the list, please. And after that, we got the picture perfect pose. And this is like a prime time sleeping position because if anyone snaps a photo of you, then you'll be flexing that arm and look so badass. And that in itself merits an A tier. But holy shit, look at that next one because that is some certified freaky deaky shit. I call that one the spank me master and it's not the worst position to sleep in. But if you're twirling those toes and got your arms in the ah, my life is a movie ass pose and I just don't rock with it. I think it'll still go in B tier because a real freak like me will know what to do. Weird ass way to frame this all, but yeah, I'll admit that this sleeping position is a bit much. Well, of course you agree. I'm the Joe dog and I'm always right. After that, we have another A tier. And the reason I have it going there is because sleeping upside down is just kind of dumb. Like, believe you me that the Joe dog loves him some feet. But if I leave my sausage toes to stink up the upper half of my bed, then I know I'll regret it next time I sleep in a normal position and smell the fungus. Still, though it feels nice as hell to sleep like this every now and then, this is the sleeping position you gotta take at a sleepover to avoid being shoulder to shoulder with the guy next to you. What kind of sleepovers are you attending where you're all in the same bed? I don't know which ones he's going to, but sign me the fuck up for that one. After that, we got the, I miss you, Gloria. I'll never forget our years in college and the magical times we had together throughout our youth. I'll never forget the smell of your hair, the way you spoke to me when I messed up, the way you impressed my parents. The way you just made every single mundane task in the world seem magical as long as you were by my side. Goof-ass pose? Like imagine being caught snuggling with your pillow, still an amazing S tier. Joe, you quite literally said you love snuggling with your pillow earlier and even referred to it as your, and to quote you directly, snuggly-wuggly. We cannot ignore that whole statement that he just said earlier. What kind of sleeping position name is that? What, the snuggly-wuggly position? Because uh, that's what I called it and nothing more. Let's continue one, and after that we got, I can't afford a blindfold, and this still goes in A tier, despite it being kind of dumb, but I kind of like being suffocated a bit. Like, if anything, I want a weighted pillow on top of my face, and I want to struggle to breathe a bit. I don't know what kinky shit you were looking up earlier, but I smell the hell out of this statement. Mistreatment over a coddling girl any day of the week. You two seriously have to go to therapists. Therapists are fake news, like Donald says. 
Anyways, after that, we got the, yeah, I got my pillow. What are you going to do about it? Sleeping position. And this is a pretty nice one. I think a solid S tier. And some may argue that it's an improvement among the other S tier sleeping positions because who can't go without a cuddle buddy? A lot of people. And don't you have a wife to cuddle? Nah, I make her sleep on the couch. She can cuddle with me once she becomes 60 years younger. That would make her 12 years old, Joe. I said what I said. Ham, anyways, after that, we have our final sleeping position, and this one is simply called the I'm asking for it. I think we all know this is a D tier, but uh, under certain circumstances, I can see this rising to S tier if this position were held for like five or 10 minutes. I have to agree with Joe on this one. Five or 10 minutes of some hot girl being in this position is more than enough. Oh, that too, but uh, I was honestly talking about myself being in that position at first. Ha! Ah! What is going on? gang -lang. We are back with another tier list, and this time around, we are doing one that the comments suggested, and that, of course, is a temperature tier list. The people asked for this, so it's only right that we give it to them. I personally would have rather have done an Oreo tier list. Well, it doesn't surprise any of us that you, of all people, would say that Donald... Hey, you calling me Fat Sleepy Joe? No, it's just that you always mention that you like Oreos. I'll definitely call you fat for that. Anything food related and you want to jump the gun on that, unless we're talking about some healthy foods. Health foods are a scam, Barack. The only thing that I need that is healthy is some goddamn Diet Coke. And maybe that's a part of the problem with the future of America, but I digress because we got to do this tier list. And up first, we got 100 plus degree temperature. And how are we feeling about this one, fellas? I don't really like the feeling of being burned to a crisp every time I take a step outside. So I'm going to have to say that this belongs in D tier. Joe, you never go outside anyways, but I do have to agree that it must feel absolutely terrible outside and getting a horrendous tan because you stood out in the blistering heat. You already have a terrible orange tan on yourself, so why would you even care if you got any darker than that? It's not a tan. It is my natural skin tone. Oh yeah, we totally believe that, Donald, don't you worry. But I'll speak in defense of this weather type because it definitely is a D tier if you're inside and have no AC, and it still probably feels bad if you're outside with nothing to do, but I would argue that this deserves a slightly higher ranking if you're doing something at the beach. Like, sure, you'll be burning up, but as soon as you enter the cold ocean or lake, it'll feel like you're reborn into a brand new body. True, I forgot to take that into account, but this by no means is beach weather. Like, it must feel amazing, but goddamn, I'm gonna have a heat stroke. Meanwhile, Joe over here is probably going to have a regular type of stroke if he's exposed to that level of heat. Speak for yourself, because there's only one type of stroke I'll be having, and it doesn't involve heat or an actual stroke. Gross as hell, Joe. But I think this still merits a solid C tier. The only reason I say this, though, is because water activities save the hell out of it. Like, imagine the inverse of this, and we have negative 29 degree weather. Like, what can you even do outside in that temperature? You'd have to stay inside and just try to keep yourself warm with some heating. And if you don't have that, then it would be a struggle to even survive. Speak for yourself. The Joe Dog has many impressive feats of endurance. One time I wrapped the fast part of Rap God from Eminem while in my undies and in below freezing temperatures because I lost a bet. Joe, I've told you many times that it wasn't a bet and you just kept saying, bet I won't do it. And I kept telling you that you didn't have to do it at all. When was this? No way Sleepy Joe can wrap the fast part without actually having a brain embolism. Oh yeah, bet I can do it right now. Do it then. Um, he was coming at you for super solid exposure, Drew Frost. I'm a limit, you're a limit, you were so limit, you want what I gotta do to get into the human, super human, innovative, that I made a rubble, so take anything you say, because we can say enough of me in a new line. I don't give a city more than ever, gonna say how to give a mother, but the naughty gets it, and the neck is devastating, ever fading, and I know the haters up ahead, the waiting for the native, they can say I fell up to the celebrating, cause I know the way to get him motivated, I'm gonna bet he knew it. You animated music. Holy shit. I mean, you fucked up at the end, and I can't verify if you even said words in the middle, but for your sleepy self, it's still impressive. This is my second time seeing him do this, and I still can't understand how he can do all of that, but fail to give a simple speech. Unless he's talking about ice cream, I guess. The Joe Dog is a man of many talents. What can I say? Well, that randomness aside, after that, we got 90 through 99 degree weather. And I still think this one is too hot, but hey, I still think it's a very solid temperature. Like, this is where it starts to get too fucking hot. And you're just like, damn, I hope it doesn't get hotter than this. But I already know some Southern person who is used to having this type of weather is ready to type out a comment saying, man, if they think this is hot, then they should try spending a day in my town. Like no motherfucker. That is precisely why we don't want to go where you're at. 
because Mother Earth is trying to tell you to vacate her premises with scorching ass heat. If you ask me, this is perfect Nesquik drinking weather. And once again, you get bonus points if you leave it in the car and it turns it into hot chocolate or hot strawberry milk for free. That is not the perfect time to have one of those damn things. But we need to come to a concrete rating on this one, gentlemen. Well, I don't think it's bad at all, but it's still too hot for my liking. I'd rather be in 80 degree weather rather than 90. I feel like this should go in B tier. I disagree. I think this should go into S tier. It's not too hot for some, but it's also not exactly bad. I personally really like this weather. How about we meet you both halfway and rate this an A tier because it is really hot, but I also agree with Joe that some people actually prefer this type of weather, actually. Moving past that, we got 80 degree weather, and I think this is a freaking banger. It's the perfect amount of heat for a beach day, and it also isn't insufferable. And I actually look forward to going outside and just lounging in my hammock in this weather. For once, we agree, Barack, because this is absolutely an S tier in my book. Uh, it's OK, I guess. Well, Joe, I was going to have this go in S tier, and uh, I am still going to place it there, because it is a perfect temp. And if that wasn't enough for everyone, I actually have 70 degree weather going into S tier as well. I refuse to hear you two out on this because with this weather and some wind, oh my God, it is absolutely magnificent. You can even roll down your windows inside and not have to worry about turning on the AC and racking up bills. Well, I personally don't care about racking up bills, but sure, we can have this there. Thanks, Donald. After that, we got 60 degree weather, and this is where I feel like I'm gonna lose a decent bit of people, but I think this is just a B tier. This, in my mind, is approaching fall weather, and it isn't chilly enough to wear sweaters because you'll end up sweating eventually, and it isn't hot enough to just straight up be in tank tops. Speak for yourself, Barack, because I will still be sweating in this type of weather. Well, they do say that larger people produce more internal heat, so uh, it doesn't surprise me at all by that. I have to agree with you, though, Barack, because this really isn't all that. Joe, I won't let that fucking comment slide. What the fuck, man? Well, don't get too angry, Donald, because what he said was actually factually true. Then since we feel this way about this, can we all agree that much of the same can be said about 50 degree weather? Like it's being too wishy-washy. And whenever it's around this weather, it usually is around fall, and I just feel like it's not really the best weather to do stuff outside. But it's too warm to have like a bonfire or something. Why the hell would you want it to be cold as hell when you're doing a bonfire? Donald, you yourself said that you sweat too much. Would you want to be roasting near the fire if it's still not cold enough? Okay, actually, valid ass point, but this is still good ass weather for staying inside. Isn't all weather good weather to stay inside thanks to modern technology? Listen, Barack, I won't deny that, but can you quit being a smart ass? I was just pointing out a flaw in your argument, but sure. But following that, we hit the peaks of sweater weather, and I love just being that right amount of chilly, where I can comfortably wear a sweater and not worry about the snow. Like if there's no wind chills or snow, then I am one happy camper out in this weather because it's just so nice to be outside, and this is most definitely bonfire weather. I can already envision how nice and toasty it would be to be bundled up outside and roasting some sausages outside, or even making some s'mores. Well, I know I'd be one happy guy roasting my blue Gatorade dogs outside while just chilling around the bonfire. Well, since you two involve food, I am now suddenly interested in this type of weather. But wouldn't you say that hotter weathers are better for barbecues? Like, why are we so focused on bonfires and roasting marshmallows or hot dogs? Why not focus on the sheer amount of red meat we can grill out in the barbecue when it's like hot outside? Well, I didn't mention it, but you're right. I mean, that is why we have 80 and 70 degree weather up in S tier. I'm sorry I didn't mention anything about food earlier because had I known that then, I would have definitely brought it up if that meant your fat ass would be even more on board with the rating. Again, I'm not fat, but rather I am bulking. But yeah, then I uh, actually have no complaints, but I refuse to have 40 degree weather up in S tier with my glorious barbecuing weather. Aw, oh, come on, Donald. You can still roast stuff like a, a T-bone steak over a campfire. Joe, we're not cavemen. I will not be doing that, and mm, I guess I can slot this over in A tier if it'll appease Donald. I'm sure other people aren't fans of cold weather, and this still isn't hot cocoa weather, so I can't give it an S tier. Following that, we got 30 degree weather, and this is like some nice cocoa weather, and it gets to the point where you're like, damn, now it's really starting to get cold. Maybe I should stay inside. But deep in your mind, you know that it really isn't cold enough for you to be lounging around and doing nothing. 
Like it's not at that point where you dread going outside, even if you're fully decked out in gear. The hell do you mean by gear? Weather and its effect on you is purely a mental game. I refuse to be cold and my body doesn't acknowledge the cold. It's all a mind game. Joe tried telling that to all the people who froze to death and have gotten hypothermia. That is simply a skill issue. Wow. This still isn't an S tier, by the way. Jesus, I know, man. I wasn't gonna place it that high, but rather I was thinking another A tier is in order. I think 10 degree or maybe even 20 degree weather is the perfect let's not go outside and stay inside all day type of weather. Unfortunately though, our list only has 29 and below. And if it weren't for that below rating, I'd put this higher, but you got me fucked up if it's in the negatives. Being outside in negative degree weather with some wind chills is possibly one of the worst things a human can experience. So I'd have to place this into D tier. Granted, if you're inside all the time with the heater and her fireplace and you're just chilling, I'd maybe consider a C tier placement, heck, maybe even a B tier, but we're counting both inside and outside weather, so it has to be low. Again, this is purely a mind game. I would never allow cold weather to dominate my mind. Joe, you might be the first American to have CTE without ever playing football. Oh, I played tons of it back in the day. I was the quarterback for my high school team, and I would tank hits head first like a goddamn unit. That explains so many things. What is going on, gang? Today, we're going to be making a YouTuber's tier list, but it won't be on just any YouTuber, as this list was created specially by Frail, and per his own words, his favorites to watch or have heard of. You know, of course, we got to have Mr. Beast for the thumbnail, but yeah, this will be a personal selection that Frail has seen or heard of. So if there's any missing, go complain about it with him. And because this is Frail's list, we don't want to besmirch his name and put a YouTuber in D tier because that would most likely get him some hate from that audience. Yeah, I don't know about that because I see binging with Babish up first and this guy is getting an immediate D tier. Now what the heck is wrong with binging with Babish? Yeah, as an eater, I'd assume you'd place him higher. See, I was going to, but he kind of fell off, much like how our channel will fall off in November. Wow, so a lot of fourth walls are gonna break this video, huh? Don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, he just had it going, but I guess eventually making so many foods from shows or movies can get tiring, and he just turned his channel to something else and didn't star in videos much himself. And listen, as a businessman, the Don gets it, but I just miss the good old days. Speaking of good old days, we got casually explained up next. And this guy used to have banger after banger for his videos, and then he stopped. But thankfully, he came back. I love the way his Microsoft Paint drawings look, and the dude is pretty funny. The Don is a fan of having his stuff casually explained, but I haven't seen much of his recent work. I'd still say that the man is deserving of a B tier. Honestly, the Joe Dog really like his videos, too. They remind me a lot of that zoo tier list guy. Why don't we have him in here? Frail must have forgotten to add him, but yeah, since most of our audience loves him, please go check out Tier Zoo on YouTube, even though most of you have probably already heard of him. Barack, don't assume our audience knows all of the YouTubers. We are here to put people onto new content so we don't have to work our asses off on these videos like goddamn slaves. Not that you would know what it's like to be worked like a slave, Barack. Uh, yeah, because I totally wouldn't understand that at all. The historical significance behind all that flies over my head entirely. I think I'd be a good slave. I'd at least sell for five schmeckles. The fuck is a schmeckle? Pardon me, okay, we can say I'd sell for a decent bit of doubloons instead. I'm fucking done with you, Joe. But anyways, we got an absolute goaded entry up next, and that is Beard Meets Food, and this guy's a fucking unit. He eats so much and makes videos of him just smashing food challenges. So entertaining, and he's an absolute S-tier. I guess it amazes you that someone would be able to eat so much more than you. Honestly, it quite does, Barack. I won't even lie to you. After that, we got PewDiePie, and this dude used to dominate every teenager and kid's YouTube feed in the mid-2010s, and this guy, well, uh, I don't remember him being entirely hilarious, and he more so yelled a ton and said a bunch of dumb shit. But hey, I'd let him bro-fist me any day. Still a D-tier for me, because he just does what he wants, and I respect that. But the content ain't for me. I'd let him fist me any day. I think you meant brofist Joe. The term he uses is brofist. No, uh, I don't think I did. Joe, stop being on demon time. It's not even late enough for that. And we've had more than enough of that during the Capri Sun tier list. But after that, we got cold ones. And these dudes are an automatic S. They shout dead memes. But the fact that they laugh at it just make me laugh as well. I love seeing two dudes get super plastered and just do random shit. 
And I personally was a big fan of Max Mofo and anything for views. I relate with Chad on a lot of stuff. Because of how smell his pecker is, right? If you ask me, it's very much so average to maybe even above average. How do you two even know what his genitals look like? Well, it's not like he tries to hide it. But yeah, these dudes are absolutely amazing and will drink tons of alcohol that you've never even heard of. Following that, we got Channel 5 and I have these guys going into C tier. And it used to be an amazing place to see thought-provoking, humorous interviews, but they stopped uploading as much, and then the host got into some allegations with a woman, and, well, uh, the Don relates to that, but at least I bounced back and beat the allegations. Uh, I don't think you ever beat them, but more so, people just genuinely didn't give a fuck. That is still a huge dub in my book. But then after we got Video Game Donkey, and this is great for gaming videos, and he is an honest-to-God S-tier. He's a cool guy who has a nice sense of nerdy humor, and his laugh just brings me joy in life. Not to mention the guy can rap, so the Joe Dog respects him artist to artist. I wouldn't say either of you can rap well, but I will give you props for being able to rap the fast part in Rap God Joe. After that, we got Come Lord Official, and I know the game will throw you all off, but I swear, this is just an innocent channel with a cute-ass Pomeranian, and his uploads used to bang, but then he stopped. So far that I'm gonna have to give it a D tier. Why do you think he stopped uploading Donald? Must have ran the fucker over or something. Lord knows I would have stepped on that little shit super easily just because of how small it is. Anyways, after that, we got Giguk, and this one is for all the weebs out there because this is your certified anime man. And I know that when he recommends something, I have to listen, and he's a funny, self-aware guy. I'm giving him an S tier. And as a matter of fact, I got our next guy also an S tier, and that is Ethos Lab because this is like the OG of OG Minecraft YouTubers. And this guy just has such a calming voice and is just great to just have on in the background. But if any of you are huge Minecraft fans, then please do check him out because he has been on YouTube for years and is still booming. Huge dub on the Etho rating. I watch him make all the redstone contraptions and can never wrap my brain around it. I don't even bother with that when I play Minecraft. All I need to do is punch wood and build. Anyways, after him, we got an A tier in Guga Foods, and this Brazilian guy just makes so much steak and does these random dry age experiments where he just dry ages meat in random ass shit and just eats it. The videos almost always play out the same way, but man, they fucking bang every time. Then we have our beloved fallen angel, and that, of course, is Filthy Frank. He belongs on the YouTube Mount Rushmore for his disgusting and edgy humor, but it was what YouTube needed at the time. I'll never forget the Cake Trilogy. What the hell is the Cake Trilogy? Oh, man, you don't know what that is, Barry? It's possibly the greatest trilogy I've ever seen. They did a vomit cake where they put all the ingredients of a cake into a man's stomach and made him throw it up and then ate it and then threw up some more. They then had hair cake where they shaved a man bald and then made a cake out of it and also ate it. And lastly, they made the human cake where they got random YouTubers and ate their toenails, piss, hair, pubes, saliva, anything that was on a human, they just put it into a cake and then guess what they did with it, Barack? Presumably they ate that monstrosity. They did indeed eat it and it was glorious. Could not have worded that better myself, Joe. Now, Filthy Frank goes by Joji, and if any of you listen to his music now, you know that same man ate a vomit cake. After that, we got Good Mythical Morning, and these guys are a nice way to start your day, and I feel like we all had a phase where we listened to them. I love Rhett and Link, but I still think they're only in C tier. After that, we got another eater, and that is Matt Stoney, and this dude is a certified dog. He doesn't upload as much, but much respect to the man, and I will place him in A tier. Then after we got Moist Critical, and this guy used to bang so much, but now he's been chilling a bit more, which is valid, but his vocabulary is immaculate. And I love the way he calls assholes chocolate starfishes. I think he gets a B tier. Donald, you have a wide selection of people on this tier list, but I can't say I'm surprised you got so many food channels on here. Listen, man, Frail made the list, so you know damn well I had no say in this. After that, we got two back-to-back A-tiers, and that is Mark Brownlee and Rye Spawn. And I'm sure all of you know who Mark's is, because he reviews all tech and his latest Apple Vision Pro video bang, so I don't think I need to explain him. But Rye Spawn was a channel that was actually smaller than ours at one point. But then he boomed, and his videos are honestly amazing. He just achievement hunts in video games. And you can watch him suffer trying to get the Platinum Trophy in a lot of games. My favorite has to be the Black Ops one, or the Infamous Trilogy. 
Following that, we got the long-awaited beast man himself. And I don't really watch him, but Frail included him for the thumbnail. So I'll just slap him on B-tier so his fanboys don't anally annihilate us. Brave Wilderness, though, gets a slightly lower tier because Coyote Peterson is cool, and you can see this man explore nature and show you a bunch of cool shit. And then you can watch him get stung by a bunch of painful insects, and that shit bangs. Honestly, I think he overplays the pain a tad bit because a motherfucker like the Joe Dog could take a bullet ant sting on my butthole and not even wince from pain. Actually, I might even like it. Wish I could relate to that Joe, but I don't do butt stuff. Not because I'm against it, but rather I'm scared I'll like it too much. And I won't be able to go back to my normal self, and then I'll constantly ask some hot goth girl to peg me, and I would rather avoid that. How about we just avoid this whole topic in general, because it's getting to be too personal? Sure, we'll deprive the people of the truth, Barack. But anyways, after that, we got primitive technology. And these dudes, well, uh, do as the name implies and just build technology primitively. I can't really do it justice, but just go watch them, and I think I'll place it into B tier. Then we got, I hate everything, and I relate to him too much because he's so goddamn bitter that he makes hour-long videos on just how much he hates shit, and that level of hater won't go unnoticed, and I will place him into A tier. Then lastly, we, of course, got this fucker frail. Of course, he'd put himself in this list because he knows we're going to give him a, an S tier. This guy thinks he's slick or something, but of course, this is the best channel on the list, and you should all be subscribed by now. Since we're breaking the fourth wall already, why don't we mention the other AI channels? I did a guest star in Uvox's Pokemon Wife Wu tier list, and that was pretty fun. Why don't we have more of those guys here, Donald? How many times do I have to tell you all that I didn't make it? But Frail did tell me to add this on to the end of the video, and this goes out to all of our precious subscribers. We love AI content, and if you have any AI content creators that you know about, please let us know in the comments. Feel free to shout them out and include them, because Frail must have clearly known that it would be unfair to only include some, when there must be so many out there in the world that clearly bang. So all of you comment down below which ones are your personal favorites, or even what YouTubers you all watch in general. We love the tight community we have here. What a nice way to end the video. You're really such a soft little guy. Fuck off. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this is the long-awaited tier list because we have a smells tier list. Frail knows that a lot of you wanted an air tier list, but he tried and tried and could not come up with enough air ideas, so we scrapped it for the next best thing because now we got tons of smell to rank. To be honest, I don't know how the hell we were supposed to grade different types of air. But I'd say this is basically the same exact thing. Honestly, I don't know how much more weird stuff we can even grade, like what's next? Bed sizes, door handles, wood types, like how much lower can we go? Donald, don't even wish that upon us because someone in the comments will actually ask for one of those things. And before anyone asks, we are 100% not doing any of the ones we mentioned above. Please spare us from our eternal suffering. The Joe Dog can make a tier list about anything if you ask me. I am a machine built only to entertain. But let's go ahead and get this list started because I cannot contain my excitement much longer. I don't know which one I'm throbbing for harder, this list or the hair tier list that you and Donald are holding over my head. Relax, Joe. If we give you too much, it'll overstimulate your mind and you'll shut down. You're right. The Joester can only be so erect. But as I said, let's get started, and up first, we got the nice smell of lavender. I actually really like this smell, and it helps relax and ease the nerves. And if your clothes smell like lavender, then the Joe Dog really knows you're a clean person, and I need that. So this is going into A tier. Joe, you of all people should not be one to criticize how other people smell, considering you probably smell worse than a manure field after the cows just got fed some Mexican food. Must be some manly smelling manure if you ask me because the Joe Dog scent is pure unadulterated testosterone and my musk is elite. Following that, we got something mighty mid and that of course is a bonfire and I have this going into C tier because while the smell of ashes isn't absolutely terrible, I would also rather just avoid it. But this does indeed come clutch if you reek of something else. And if you wanna mask your smell, then this is a good way to hide it. Joe, do you really hate showering that much that you would rather smell like burnt wood than to ever shower? Oh no, I just meant that it was good to hide the smell of the za. But yeah, your reasoning can also go into play. After that, we got two back-to-back -back S tiers. And that, of course, is the smell of cookies and vanilla. Just thinking about the smell of these two got the old Joe dog creaming, because I know if I ever smell these two, then I know there's gonna be something good cooking. Joe, you're finally spitting, because goddamn the Don, 
turns into the Doninator when he smells some freshly smelled cookies. I'd fight an army of deaf and blind children in order to get some nice smells like that. Why'd you have to go and make them blind and deaf? Because then I could ensure my victory. I would be putting them into chokeholds and curb stomping them. They'd be running into walls and screeching some weird noises sounding like a damn zombies from The Walking Dead while I demolished them one by one and just squishing them like thwomps from Mario. I'd go <laughs> on their ass and just smushing them with my massive bunda. And massive bunda, you do indeed have Donald. Trust me, the Joe dog can verify that firsthand. Don't sexualize me, Joe. You can stop me in real life, but you can't stop my imagination. Anyways, after that, we got some massive stinkers and we got three back to back to back D tiers. And that, of course, is the precious za, old smelly books and some gasoline. I think I'd rather receive ass to mouth from a homeless man than to ever expose myself to these things. You're a vile man, Joe, and a hypocrite at that because you definitely smell worse than these things. Listen, man, the ladies love Joey's scent. I don't know what to tell you, but oh man, speaking of ladies, oh, 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 we got a motherfucking banger of an S tier. And of course, there's a girl's sweat like just thinking of a nice and sweaty girl coming back with some smelly armpits and just leaving her primal scent all over the joster. My God, I think that might be the best smell on this whole goddamn list. I knew your ass was gonna say something about it as soon as I saw it on screen because everyone knows that you're a freak, Joe. What can I say? Real freaks like me just get it. Then after we got some freshly done laundry and that'll go into B tier. It smells super nice, but at the end of the day, most detergents either smell like lavender or vanilla. Something that would be up above it, but I'll still respect some neutral smelling clean clothes. After that, we got some roses, and obviously, that's an easy S tier, but more importantly, we got a decently smelling one up next and some good old Elmer's glue. I know everyone here loves themselves some Elmer's glue. God, Joe, no one here likes the smell of Elmer's glue. I don't know what you wanted us to say here. If this weren't Elmer's glue, then I'd give it an S tier, because huffing some glue can lead to some fun times. Don't say that, Donald. I was just gonna say that I like playing with it and putting it on my fingers and letting it dry. Still though, the smell itself gets a C tier. Following that, we got freshly mowed lawns and this gets an immediate A tier. The feeling of looking over your freshly cut lawn and just smelling the success that you just created, there's just no feeling like it. Unfortunately for us, we got a kind of stinky smell up next and that is chlorinated pools and it does smell a bit clean. It also just doesn't have an appetizing smell. I think a solid C is in play for this. Man, how the hell is the nasty smell of chlorine in C tier? That shit should be in D tier or a goddamn F tier if we had it. When I smell chlorine, I just feel like it's clean. Same with bleach and Lysol, but I'll get to those when I get to them. After that, we of course have a new car smell and you all already know that this is a freaking S tier. Like maybe it's because of the fact that you're buying a whole ass new car, but it just smells amazing and it gives me so much dopamine. After that, we got freshly bought tennis balls and this shit is okay. The Joester doesn't really go crazy for it, but I mean, it's a C tier. Oh my God, but hold the phone because we have two back-to-back -back stinkers going into D tier because skunks and wet dogs smell like absolute ass. Like I think I'd rather have someone freshly fart in my face, like straight ass to nose with no underwear on, like straight fecal matter molecules going into my nose than ever in my life voluntarily enjoy these two goddamn smells. Joe, I was assuming that a real freak like you was gonna say something about girls smelling like wet dogs or something. I'm actually amazed you made the right ranking. Well, I mean, if the girl smells like wet dog or skunk, that's a whole different story. If it's a wet dog or a skunk, then it is indeed a D tier. What the hell do you mean it's a whole different story if they smell the same? What can I say? Real freaky motherfucker like me just knows. Anyways, moving past that, we got some garlic and paint going into C tier. And I know that people are gonna give me a major side eye at this ranking and be absolutely perplexed and baffled that I put garlic and paint in C tier, but I will say this, garlic bread smells amazing and other garlic foods do too, but garlic on its own smells like ass. The Joe Dog is not a fan of that. Joe, you a fucking vampire or some shit? Who the fuck hates the smell of garlic that much that they'd place it on the same tier as paint, glue, chlorine pools, and bonfires? Hey man, the Joe dog works in mysterious ways. What can I say? Anyways, after that, we got cinnamon going into A tier because it does smell great in small batches, but man, oh man, that shit makes me fucking sneeze. But oh boy, howdy, we got some bangers in S tier with oranges, peppermints, and pine. 
These are all bangers and should be respected as such. Then after that, I got vapor up. And let me tell you all that you should definitely not be using this for sensitive areas because it will sting like the scorching hot pain of a thousand suns. I still like the smell a lot whenever I'm sick, so it deserves an A tier. Joe, are your arms sensitive or something? It's super fucked if your skin is that sensitive that it can't handle some simple vapor rub. Oh, you silly man, Barack. Of course my skin isn't sensitive, but let's just say that the Joester had an idea when it came to using vapor rub since he saw the lotion bottle was empty. Let's just say that I won't be repeating that again. After that, we got expo markers, and to be honest, if you sniff these enough, they start to smell good and give you a little head buzz. So I have to give these bad boys a B tier. Joe, you cannot rank things because they make you feel lightheaded after you huff them enough. Juicy Joe here says that he can do whatever he wants. And guess what? I'm putting a fresh cup of coffee straight into S tier. What are you going to do about it, Barry? Honestly, nothing. That's a valid as fuck statement. Yeah, Joe, sometimes I wonder if your brain operates the same way as us because any normal human would applaud or not even bat an eye at that statement and ranking. But you did all that to try to get Barack angry, and that is uh, something a normal human would not do. Now, nah, I know Barack is fuming at this, but he's keeping it a secret. But yeah, then I got nail polish and bleach going into B tier, but that surprises nobody. What the fuck are you on about Joe, if anything? This shit just now pisses me off more. Quit the acting, Barack. I know what makes you tick, but yeah, after that, we got rain and bacon going into S tier. A nicely fresh and rainy night just feels like you have newborn wind to inhale and it all smells so fresh and of course we all love bacon. After that I got Lysol wipes going into B tier and then Play-Doh going into C tier because that stuff smells like ass. Okay, why the hell are all the cleaning products going into high tiers when I know damn well your ass doesn't even use them because your room always smells crazy? Listen man, that's just because I cook with a lot of spices. That's why it smells that way. Joe, boiling Gatorade and dipping your dogs into that is not cooking with spices. Listen, man, you don't tell me how to cook because I love me, my Joe dogs, and I will die on a cross for them. Anyways, wrapping up this list, we got baby powder going into B tier and popcorn going into A tier. Honestly, I stopped caring about this list as soon as I ranked the girl's sweat. Joe, you're an absolute freak for that ranking because anything sweaty smells like hot ass. Yeah, and don't even get me started on how smelly it must get in India. Don't even bother finishing your sentence. Well, here we are. We've really hit rock bottom with this one. This is all thanks to absolutely every single soul in the comments that, for whatever unholy goddamn reason, wanted this cursed list. Special shout out to the two donators who made this possible, and that is Ray Marshalls with the 10, and then Jesus Christ, the man who loves to torture us with this big $100 donation to basically make this possible. And that, of course, is our main man at noname-gp6hk. God, that long-ass name, but shout out to those two. Everyone in the comments better be sucking them off just for the fact that they made this possible, but know that we have integrity and we won't be bought out for future video ideas. Unless they donate 100 plus, because at that point they're just asking for it, absolutely begging for the Joe Dog and company to just make a tier list all over their pretty face just drench them in pure, unadulterated tier lists. I don't like the way you describe that. I actually don't think I like it at all. The people like the way I talk to them. They are literally asking for it. I won't lie. Joe's actually spitting right now because the people are asking for it. I mean, just look at us right now. We are about to rate some door handles, and what criteria do we even grade it on? I don't know, but I know that deep down we'll know what to rate it. Man, what the hell does that even mean? Whatever, let's go ahead and get this started, and up first we just got uh, I don't even know what to call these knobs, but I guess the spherical knob with the lock and the idle and the design of this one is simple, but hey, it gets the job done. I personally hate how if you have sweaty hands and try to turn it, then it like gets kind of icky sometimes. And then when you turn it, it'll like not turn properly because your hands are all sweaty and nervous. Joe, this sounds like a you problem. Like what is there to be so nervous about when you're turning a door handle? I just have an irrational fear that I'll enter that house and all I'm gonna hear is, why don't you take a seat right over there? And then I'd have to bolt out of that house. Joe, what the hell are you doing online and who the heck are you meeting up with? You should not be scared of Chris Hansen. Oh, I'm not scared of him, but rather I'm scared of what I'd do to him in a room alone. See, I call him Chris Hansen, and I just know I wouldn't be able to hold back any of my intrusive thoughts and there's no way Chris Hansen would be able to stop what I'd do to him. Absolutely insane, but more importantly, we got a list to do, and I think this is an A tier. We started off extremely strong. 
Yeah, I was thinking an S tier, but hey, you're the one making the list. I guess you're just saving S tier entries for the more bougie stuff. But uh, Donald, we then got some weird ass looking handle. And I don't know about you guys, but I immediately want to put this into D tier. Yeah, that handle looks like a duck's cock with their weird and funky corkscrew dicks. Why the hell is that what comes to your mind first? And why do you know what a duck's genitalia looks like? The better question is, why don't you know what a duck's genitalia looks like? That is not at all the better question, Joe. But yeah, that handle looks like garbage. 100% agree, so I think D tier is where it'll sit at. But then after we got some passcode ass door handle, and it's also that horizontal-like hook design, I guess, I don't know what the fuck to call it, but you all see what it is. And I immediately am putting this into C tier because it is better than the duck dick handle, but I hate that passcode. Imagine pulling up to your house and you have to enter a passcode. What would happen if you were about to get mugged or like if some serial killer was after you and you got killed because you typed in the wrong passcode? Joe, I imagine that if you're bougie enough to have a passcode for your door, then you'd probably be in an okay neighborhood. Stop fucking saying bougie when describing them. Just say it looks rich. But uh, speaking of rich, we then got our first S tier because goddamn, look at the bezels on this golden knob. I could rub on that knob for hours upon hours just with how elegant that thing looks. Phrasing Donald, but yeah, it does look pretty nice. The bezels do feel like it would help with my sweaty hands. I'm starting to think I may have hyperhidrosis, guys. Joe, do I look like a fucking doctor? My last name doesn't end with Patel, does it? So how the hell am I supposed to know what the fuck is wrong with you? Then after we got three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back B tiers, and that, of course, is this hatch-looking doorknob, the same spherical knob from before, but this time it has a condom on it. And lastly, a pure spherical doorknob, like our A tier friend, but with no lock in the front of it. So let me speak on the hatch looking one. And uh, I just think hatches are cool. And even if you have that on a normal door, it's like easy to grab onto and pull. The spherical condom doorknob is exactly like the one in, in A tier, but man, the Dawninator only goes in raw and the same would apply for a door handle. And lastly, that last spherical one is just too spherical, too smooth if you ask me. The Joester also relates heavily to the raw dog comment. I don't relate with literally anything you two are saying. And maybe that's a part of the problem, but hey, who am I to judge? I'm only the man who is loved by almost everyone. I don't think that's right at all. It's up in the air, but anyways, following that 3P to B tiers, we got the double barrel handles, and these are never gonna be used for a front entrance. But goddamn, if you got a glass door, then these bad boys will look magnificent. I have that bad boy going straight to S tier because of how clean these things look if you got the right setup. But uh, what the hell is that next doorknob? I have no clue. Well, I expected that answer from you, Joe, but man, is it one you put your fingers in and pull? I honestly cannot tell, and I already know someone is about to bake us alive in the comments for not knowing what the fuck that handle is. Either way, this shit is a D tier. After that, we got the same sphere doorknob. Like, goddamn, they're so similar to the other ones that we already ranked, but either way, this one looks slightly more worn down and nastier, so this gets a C tier. But holy shit, we got three back-to-back-to-back -back -back A tier, guys. You know, it honestly amazes me that we're even ranking these doorknobs and associating them with different rankings and even listing off pros and cons to them. Okay, Barack, we fucking get it, man. You're surprised we're doing this, but hell, man, we're like halfway there. So let me go on and begin to blow cum bubbles on these three door handles because they absolutely bang. You see, the Don is a fan of those horizontal door handles, and if you add a little curve to them, then you already know I fucks with the curvy things, and of course I'll say that I love that door handle. Place that bad boy indoors, and you got yourself a fancy room doorknob. Then after we got the same exact thing minus the curve, but I do like the extra lock at the bottom, then lastly we just got a pulling bar once again, but instead of being vertical, it's horizontal. This shit would bang on some cabinets or other things that you need to pull. Uh, but then after we got two D tiers, because we have the fucking nerd ass passcode door coming back, but with a spherical doorknob this time. And then we got some bejeweled ass fruity looking doorknob. Not that there's anything wrong with looking fruity. I just don't get those passcode doors. Like if I really wanted to break into your house, I wouldn't be using the doors. I'd study your schedule over a series of months and jot them down in my handy dandy notebook. Then I'd make sure to make note of what days you leave and slowly but surely, try to make my way through a window that was left slightly askew or simply bide and wait for my time to catch you all alone. Maybe after a bar crawl and when you're at your weakest. You always feel so confident coming home, but oh, Joe Dog knows that already. 
All it takes is one drunken stumble inside whilst forgetting to close the door behind you, or possibly leaving your door open on a random day and I just camp out inside your house. Make mental notes of where everything is, steal your precious items and use them for my own pleasure. The Joe Dog knows everything about you. I know your favorite food. I know the way you laugh, the way you feel so safe, especially when you shouldn't. I studied you, I loved you, I need you. Soon I'll have you. Um, excuse me, but what the fuck? It was merely a jest on a part of the camp of Joe. I pray for whoever the hell Joe has his sights on, but I don't care about the impending crime that Joe will commit, but rather, I want to go back to ranking knobs. After that, we got our final S tier, and yes, you all heard correctly, because I doubt those next two knobs will even come close to S tier, but anyways, I have this bad boy up there because, well, I mean, just look at it. It's a nice and sleek design, and I think I just prefer the gold finish on these doorknobs. Like, I'm telling you all that I would have given that doorknob with the condom on an S tier if it didn't use protection. Like, imagine how dirty that plastic bit will get once enough people rub their grimy hands all over it. Shit is gonna turn into the darkest black ever imagined in this world. So if you like gold so much, why is the next knob not an S tier? Because it's a fucking oval, man. You got me extremely fucked up if you think I'm gonna play some oval ass doorknob up in S tier and even A tier. As a matter of fact, this shit looks dumb as fuck and it's a goddamn oval. I think I have to place this monstrosity into C tier because it's not as dumb as the D tier ones, but goddamn, why the hell did they decide to make this shit into an oval? What's next? Some fucking triangle knobs? Maybe they'll make some star-shaped knobs or even some square knobs whilst they're at it. Jesus Christ, man. I didn't know you were this passionate over some doorknobs. Okay, I'm normally not, but goddamn, doesn't that oval-shaped piece of shit just piss you off? Uh, no, not really, and uh, it's probably because it's just a doorknob. You know what, man? Maybe I just got invested in fuck since we've basically devoted 10 minutes to pure doorknob rankings, and I am now a doorknob snob. Now that was a stinker of a joke. Joe, it wasn't a fucking joke. I just happened to say knob and snob. It was a coincidental rhyme at a bad time. There I go again. Let's please wrap up this list because I can feel the active brain rot coming from ranking these doorknobs. And lastly, we got a pretty good one, and that is the somewhat spherical one, but it's more defined, and I think it's the one with the slit in the middle of it where the lock goes. And I love some slits, so that has to go into A tier. We talking about slits? I love me some slits. Joe, please enough with that talk. You're right, I need to focus on my mission and I need some energy drinks to stay up and watch them. Joe, what the hell are you talking about? Who are you watching? Satire, totally some satire. Oh boy, when I fucking find you, I'm gonna love having my way with you.